Hello everybody, this is Hal, Quail Studios Guitar. <laughs> Thank you for being here this morning. It's great to have you. Having a little trouble with my camera, but uh, now it's, it's fixed. Well, we won't go into details. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. I'm looking at chat. Excellent. L.C. Rokum. Very, very good. Glad to have you here, Bob. Glad to have you here. And um, let's see. Oh, oh, you're that's um. Oh, you don't have your name on there. W a eight a r s. I know who you are. Anyway. <laughs> Today we're going to talk a little bit about scales, and, and I've had people tell me, you know, scales are really boring, I don't really want to, you know, practice scales and that kind of thing, but um, let me show you something on the piano just for a second. Take my hat off. Not my hat. Don't want to hit anything up there in the ceiling. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play something on the piano. You may not have ever, it's Mike. That's right, it's Mike. Hi, Mike. <laughs> okay, uh, I used to study piano uh, from a, uh, a very good pianist. His name is Dale Parkinson. He, was, he is a concert pianist and he, was, uh, he has been, I don't know if he's still there. I, I haven't checked with him lately, but he was teaching for years and years over at Boise State University I didn't meet him there. I've been at a different college where he was uh, teaching first. But this is a piece that I uh, heard when I was a student. Just make sure that you can see me. I'm just going to play a little piece of it. Now, this string setting isn't the best in the world, but we're going to go with it anyway. is um, Beethoven's, this is Ludwig van Beethoven, and he played, well he, he wrote that, it's a cello sonata, it's opus 69, and it's for cello and piano. Now you'll notice at the beginning of it, and I messed up the beginning, but uh, the cello does this. Oh, I'm messing it up. And then he holds that note, and then the piano comes in. Right, and at the top of that, there's a, there's a little thing here. And then I did a line there that goes from E to this E, it's four octaves. Now you'll notice that um, what I did was I actually played a scale. And when I was learning this, and I was reading the music, I went, wait a minute, that's just a scale. That's just an E major scale. And that's all it is. Oops, excuse me. You know what? Sometimes uh, when you have to memorize a whole bunch of notes, a whole uh, lot of music, you know, there's 29 notes from here all the way down to here. 
And instead of memorizing every note, it's like, okay, there's a C and then there's a D sharp and then there's a C sharp and then there's a B and there's an A and then there's a G sharp and then there's an F sharp and then there's an E. If you know your scales, then you just play the scale. Now, I used to practice all my scales on piano, you know, C major scale. Right? All the scales, all the 12 scales. And this one was an E major scale. And we used to do it four octaves up, four octaves down, then do arpeggios. And I did this every week. I did a new scale every week. And that's how I learned my scales on the piano. Now, when I was memorizing, oh, let's turn that down. When I was memorizing that piece of music, I just said to myself, oh, hello, Sean. No problem. We're still going. So when I was, um, you know, working with the guitar, you can learn your scales, right? Now here's a, let's see, let's do a G major scale. Right? Now if you have to play a song with a scale and you don't know the scale, then it's a little more difficult. Let's see, here's a C major scale. Okay, here's a song that goes, that plays a scale. Right? That's a C major scale backwards. Now, here's how the song goes. Right? Do you know that song? It's a Christmas song. And it's just a C major scale backwards. Now, if it was in the key of D, which I've seen it written in the key of D before, Right? I could just take it up an octave. Oops. I missed my note. That's okay. So there's a scale. It's really important. So some people say, well, the scales are really boring. Well, you know what? You don't have to learn the whole scale all at once. You can learn parts of the scale. Like five notes of it. Or just start with two notes. Right? And go, okay. Here's the first two notes. And then where does it go from there? And then do it again. And memorize those. So memorize it one piece at a time. Yeah, joy to the world. There you go, Bob. Exactly. Now, scales can be minor scales, major scales. There's modes and things like that. But I would recommend that you probably start with major scales because major scales, there's so many songs that are in major. And of course, minor are pretty good too. Now, in my book... Uh, you'll get minor and major scales in the back. I forgot to look it up. I was kind of busy with my camera. It wasn't working, so I forgot to look up the page number. But in my book, which you can get at, uh, by well, in, the links are in the description. You can go to Patreon and get it. You can get it at Subscribestar, or you can uh, pay me something over at PayPal and get my book. I'll send it to you. Put it on my email list. So there's also pentatonic scales. Right? And pentatonic scales are five note scales. Um, the other scales, the major scales, let's go to G major. Okay, that's a seven note scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the next one is G again, the one you started with. So um, seven note scales, five note scales. Pentatonic scales, I love pentatonic scales, especially for playing leads. Can you hear that loud enough? Turn it up just a little bit. Okay, that's an E minor pentatonic. That's in my book also, in the back. Now, the E minor pentatonic and the G major pentatonic are actually the same scale. They use the same notes. If you start on G, right? Maybe that's the G major pentatonic. If you start on E, right, that's the E minor pentatonic, but it's really the same scale. Just like a G major scale, oops, let's do it up here. Or we could do it here. Okay, the G major scale is the same as the E minor scale. It's the same notes, 
it's a different pattern when you play it on the guitar. And that's something else that I really, really love about the guitar is that when you learn a scale, let's say a C major scale, okay, and then you want to play a D major scale, you go up two frets and you play the same pattern. Right? It's the same pattern. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. In D major, it's D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. But you don't have to know the notes. You just have to know the pattern, and you can play it. No big deal. Okay, so let's talk about using a scale. Um, I'm going to use G major or E minor pentatonic or E minor right? And I'm going to start actually just with four notes. I'm going to start with the D string 12th fret, the D string 14th fret, and then we're going to go to the G string 12th fret, and then the G string 14th fret. So it's like a box. Okay? So I'm going to start a, um, a loop that I did here. Okay, so this is a G chord starting right here. Going to a D chord. Going to an E minor. Going to C. Now I'm going to start with that note right there. Okay. You'll notice that none of those notes, or none of those chords and that note right there, that D note, sound bad together. The G chord, the D is in the G chord. The D is in the D chord. The D, in relation to the, um, to the E chord, is the minor seven. Right, so if I play the D, it's like, and I'm playing an E minor. It's like I'm playing E minor 7. And then the C chord. Wait, wait, did I play the. Oh, yeah, the C. That D would be the 9. Right? So let's do it again. Here goes G chord, D chord. This is like an E minor 7. And this is like a C9. So you start with one note, and then you go up to the next note. So the D chord is in the G chord. The D chord is in D note is in the D chord. The E note is in the E minor. That's the E note. It's in the C chord. Now. A G note right here. Now I'm going to go to that fourth note. around with those notes and I'm listening to the notes and the chords together. Now when a note doesn't sound good, let's say if I'm playing the first chord, oops, that note is not in the chord. That note is in that chord. That note is not in that chord. That note is not in that chord. That's an A note. So. When a note is not in a chord, it's called a non-harmonic tone. And it clashes a little bit with the chord. And sometimes it's worse and sometimes it's better. So let's go back and listen. When a note doesn't sound good, move to another note. That sounds good. That sounds good. Sounds good. That 
sounds good. Now, what I did right there was I slid up two notes, two frets actually, right? So I'm gonna add another note, right? So let's do that. could bend up to that note. Now, if I go up a little bit higher, now, when I'm using the pentatonic scale, it's only five notes of the major scale or five notes of the minor scale. If you know where the notes are that are missing, Right there, G, F sharp, because it's it's in the in the scale. So these two notes between the B string, the twelfth fret, and the fifteenth fret, there's a note missing. It's right here on the thirteenth fret. And then between these two notes, twelfth fret and the fifteenth fret on the E string, that note is missing on the fourteenth fret. So if I play the notes that are in between right? Like that. Then I've filled in the notes. So here goes. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually playing, oops, I'm actually playing the G scale, right? Up here. Sorry. It's the G scale. Right? If I leave those notes out, then I've got the pentatonic scale. You can bend those notes too. Now, when I was 18 years old and I was in a band called Renaissance and I was playing down the LA area, some guy came up to me and he said to me during a break, he said, you are the most amazing guitar player I've ever seen. <laughs> and I, I kind of laughed inside myself. I just said, thank you very much, you know. But the the truth was, at that time, when I was learning to play leads, I, I usually knew a couple of places to be on the guitar, two or three places, and I didn't really know my way around on the neck very well. So let me show you something. So here's the pentatonic scale for this chord progression. Right? I'm gonna fill it in. Right, I knew I could go down, all the way down here. A lot of times what I had is I had um, I had it worked out where I could play somewhere in the middle. Right? So I could play down in the bottom, you know, down here. And I could go to the middle part. Oop, I hit in the wrong note. Right? And then I could go up, up higher and play up higher. So I had a few places worked out that made sense to me. And uh, that's all I knew. So let's say I was playing, um, I'm gonna turn this on.
I'm just giving you an example with the pentatonic scale. Staying within that pentatonic scale. I did hit that note one time, which was like, oh. Now, sometimes if you hit a wrong note, if you hit it more than once, people will go, oh, yeah, he meant to do that. Okay, let's look at the chat. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see. Well, thank you very much, Crying Cancer. Appreciate you today. Uh, Jose de Silva, I've seen you this, I've seen you uh, earlier, Jose. Thank you for coming. Sean Ashbury, love the pentatonic scales, but always seem to play them up and down. Yeah, you know what? Um, I'm just playing them up and down because I'm showing you what to do. It's really nice to get out of that box. You know, get it, get out of the box. And we're not going to talk about, you know, chords today. But we can do something called arpeggios with chords. And that's really good too. I'm just, this is just a, a primer, you know, to help you get going. Let's see. Hey, I hope you're having a good morning too, Crying Cancer. Thank you very much. Why Crying Cancer? Are you with cancer? I don't know. It's just a great, great name, isn't it? Um, yes, it does work well. Yeah, the E minor pentatonic works well. You know why the E minor pentatonic works well with its progression, Bob? It's because the E minor pentatonic and the G major scale are the same scale. It's the same scale. They're the same notes, right? There's the G major scale. Here's the E minor scale. It's just a, the same scale, right? Wait, wait. There's the E minor. Now right there, what I did was I came back and played the major scale and then ended on E. It's just like E minor. Let me go down and sets, let's see here. How to know what pentatonic key to play in over a chord progression. That's a really good question, Sean. Um, if I'm in G major, this is G major. It's got a G chord. Let me turn that off. E minor. A lot of times when you look at a song, if it starts in G and ends in G, it's in G. So you would use a G major scale, G pentatonic, E minor pentatonic, and really those are the same pentatonic scales. Um, we'll have to talk about that a little bit more in depth so you can understand how that works. Let's see. You ain't no Rick Beato, dude. No, no, I'm not. I'm not Rick Beato. I love Rick Beato. Rick Beato is amazing. Yes. No, I'm not Rick Beato. You can tell just by looking at me. My hair's not white. Um, the best way to play the guitar is play with feelings. Yes, Jose, this is true. With feeling. And you've got to know your notes. You've got to have a good feeling for what's going on in the guitar, you know, to be able to play with feeling. Okay. Thanks for being here. I'm going to shut this down. Um, we'll talk later about different things. If you have questions or you want to, um, you know, you want me to talk about certain things, email me over at lessonswithhal at gmail.com or you can get in touch with me on Patreon or on Subscribestar. Um, let's see. What else? You can put things in the chat. During the chat is nice now or after. You can get my book. Um, Links are in the description. I've got over 70 songs in there now, songs that I teach on uh, online here with tabs. I just finished a tab for, um, let's see, um, Rainbow Connection. I just finished that tab yesterday. And uh, wait, Sean says, wait. <laughs> wait what? Okay. I will be around. Um, I'm going to go hang out with some of my... Uh, some of my supporters right now over at Rock Out Loud. They have the link if you want to become one of my supporters and get the link and hang out with me right after live streams. Uh, get in touch with me. Okay. Is there a good reason for three notes per string scales? Is there a good reason for three notes per screen, string? You mean playing three notes? Yeah, it fits the hand really well. Okay, 
You can also play scales like this. Right, you can play it on one string going up. Or you can play it on two strings. What's my next note? You can play it on three strings. There, anyway. Okay, anything else? I just learned the pentatonic, wondering if the three string is worth the effort. Of course it is, yeah. Major, minor scales, I mean. Yeah. Usually, you know, when you're playing across and you have four, four fingers, I've got two notes on that string. Actually, I could go. There's usually two or three notes on every string. Okay, guys, I gotta go. Talk to you later, okay?